Hey everybody, this is Brian and Qt6 has been released. So we are going to start down the Qt6 path. I'm really unsure where I want to take this series. I'm not sure if I want to pick up where Qt5 left off or start all over again from scratch because there's so many changes in Qt6. I almost feel like they've done a complete rework of the entire Qt core. This is just insane. I absolutely love Qt6 so far. This video, we're going to show you how to install Qt6 on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Let's dive in and take a look. One thing I love about Qt is it's very versatile. You can install it just about anywhere. For example, I have this Linux virtual machine that I'll be doing most of my development on. So Linux is a little bit more challenging than Windows and Mac. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, well, make sure your system's up to date. You are updating your system, aren't you? If you're updating your system, this should be fairly snappy and a short step. However, if you're not updating your system, yeah, be prepared. Also, let's go ahead and paste this in. We're going to install G++. I have this installed already. Feel free to use whatever compiler you want, but I'll be using G++ for my tutorials. From there, go ahead and go to download and try. Scroll all the way down to downloads for open source users and Click go to open source. Make sure you understand all of the obligations for open source. I've covered this in previous videos. It's pretty straightforward, but you have to really give cute credit where credit's due and make sure you are following the open source licensing. From there, click download the cute online installer. Go ahead and scroll down and click download. The online installer is, well, pretty small, so it should be a pretty snappy download, even on this little virtual machine here. Once you've got this, go ahead and show in folder and right click properties. And you want to make sure that this is executable. If you're a command line wizard, of course, feel free to do all of this right off the command line. From there, simply run the installer and everything is, well, pretty straightforward make sure you have a cute account. If not, go ahead and sign up for one. This is a big turnoff for a lot of people, but I can tell you, this is not a paid advertisement. I'm just a normal user and I have not gotten any spam from Qt whatsoever. So it's actually not bad, but you'll need a email and a password. Go ahead and sign up and then hit next. Make sure you've read and approved the obligations of using open source. The big takeaway here is that you're not going to modify Qt. And if you do, you give those modifications back to Qt and the open source community. Also, you have to follow all the licensing guidelines, all of which is available out on Qt. Go ahead and hit next. Okay. If you're feeling very generous, you can help them by allowing statistics in Qt Creator. A lot of people don't trust that, so they just go to disable. I'm going to do disable simply because I'm on a little virtual machine, and what I do on this virtual machine is not really what I do in real life most of the time. Now, I want a custom installation. You can definitely feel free to do the default, but I want a custom installation. So I'm going to go to Browse, and I want to put this in a special folder. From here, I'm going to tell it to go into the Qt subfolder. Hit next. A lot of people will instantly go in and say, oh, I want everything, but then they're shocked that it is a massive download. Again, I'm on a small virtual machine here, so I don't want five gigs. When in doubt, don't select the whole thing, only select what you need. What you need for these videos right off the bat is desktop, and we might even touch in on the compatibility modules. If you want stuff later, you can run the maintenance tool and install it after the fact. You don't need to download everything right up front. Go ahead and agree to the license agreement and go ahead and install. All right, once the installer is done, Linux has another extra little step here. You're going to want to go out to Google and you're going to want to look up for your operating system how to install OpenGL. Once you find those steps, go ahead and follow those directions on how to install OpenGL for your Linux version. The big takeaway here is that Qt has an amazing graphics engine, but it does rely on OpenGL. So if you don't have that installed, you're going to have a bad time when you go to do QML or Qt widgets. 
back in the installer, you can just make sure Launch Cute Creator is checked and hit finish. Now let's say you've been happily coding away, but you find there's a feature you're missing and you want to go out and reinstall it. You don't have to reinstall all of Qt. Instead, go out to wherever you installed Qt and run the maintenance tool. This is the de facto on every operating system, and I'm going to cover this in Mac and Windows as well. But you just run this maintenance tool and it starts the installer. Hit Next. And then make sure you've got Add or Remove Components selected from there. Hit next, it will download the meta information. And then you can just simply select the components that you want. Hit next and follow the directions on the screen. This is how to install Qt on Mac. First thing you want to do is make sure that you have Xcode installed, configured, and that you can open it. Once you get to this point, you're pretty much good to go. If you have any issues, consult Apple's documentation on how to configure Xcode. From there, you're going to download the online installer for open source and Mac. Make sure you understand and agree to all the open source license restrictions and go to download the Qt online installer. Download the installer. Once the installer has been downloaded, go ahead and open it up. You're going to want to mount the DMG file that you downloaded. And then run the installer. You'll need the Qt account and password. If you don't have one, go ahead and click sign up. The process is fairly painless and then click next. Make sure you have read and approve of the obligations for using open source with Qt and click next. Go ahead and disable sending statistics and go ahead and choose your download installation location. From there, you're going to want to select what components you want. A common mistake is to select everything. Instead, just choose what you need, similar to how we did it in the Linux section. Once you've decided what you need, go ahead and hit Next. And go ahead and accept the license agreement and Next and Install. Once the installation process is finished, make sure Launch Qt Creator is checked. Hit Finish. After the installation, go ahead and unmount that DMG. If there's anything that you forgot to install, you can go back out to your installation folder and run the maintenance tool. The maintenance tool will allow you to install any components that you want and even remove components you don't want. Make sure that Add Remove Components is selected and hit Next. From there, the steps are virtually identical. Just expand your version of Qt and select what you want to install. And then hit Next and follow the directions on the screen. These are the steps you need to install Qt 6 on Windows 10. First thing you need to do is go to qt.io, click Download and Try, scroll all the way down to Downloads for Open Source Users, and click Go Open Source. Make sure you understand and agree to all of the licensing restrictions for open source development and scroll all the way down to download the Qt online installer. From here, just simply download the installer and wait for the download to complete. Go ahead and open up the installer and run it. The installer is pretty intuitive and pretty straightforward. Simply make sure that you have a Qt account. If you don't, you can go ahead and sign up. It's pretty painless. Hit Next. Go ahead and make sure you approve the obligations of using Qt Open Source and hit Next. 
Hit next again to download the meta information. And go ahead and disable usage statistics. I want to do a custom installation. Hit next. And feel free to put Qt wherever you want it. From there, choose Qt along with Qt version 6. Common mistake is to select the entire thing, but then you're shocked by a massive download. So don't check everything. Instead, just check what you need. For example, I'm going to use MinGW 64-bit along with the Qt 5 compatibility module. If I want something else, for example the sources, I can download those later. Everything else can be installed later. Note if you do a previous installation, there is a lot more and it is a much bigger download. People are often shocked by how much you're downloading. Again, just install what you need. For example, MinGW 64-bit. Once you have everything that you want to download, go ahead and double check and then hit next. From there, make sure you agree to the license agreement and hit next again. Choose a shortcut name and then hit install. Once the installation has been completed, hit next, make sure that launch Qt creator is checked and hit finish. If at any time you realize you're missing a component or you want to add a feature of Qt, simply go to wherever you installed Qt and run the maintenance tool. Repeat the sign-in process. Go ahead and make sure that Add Remove Components is selected. Then go ahead and expand the version of Qt you want to update and select any components you need and hit Next. Follow the directions on the screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.